Saturday has been circled on the calendar since Nick Saban was hired at Alabama. First matchup against his former team. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on the SEC Game of the Week presented by Geico. Breaking down third-ranked LSU and number 22 Alabama. Saban led LSU to its first national title in 45 years, then bolted for the Dolphins, now trying to rebuild in Tuscaloosa. But this game, despite all the talk about the coaches, it does have bigger implications than just an emotional coaching matchup. For more, we bring in Spencer Tillman, who will break it down along with Tim Brando on CBS on the TIAA, Kreft College Football Today. And Spence, Nick Saban said the focus of this game has to be on the players. But how in the world is that possible <laughs> when he recruited 17 of those guys that are starting for LSU? It's not possible, So, but they are saying the right thing. Les Miles is also saying the right thing as well, Jason. It's really fun to watch this. The only way this game could be bigger, and we all already know that it's for first place, sole possession of first place, but also, if it were the last game of the year, that would be the only thing I can see about how this game is unfolding that would make it bigger than it would possibly could be. Both teams coming off breaks gives us two full weeks to kind of blow this thing up. It's kind of like the Super Bowl. So it's, it's a great fodder for all of us to talk about it. Man, this is a big one. Well, it also gave uh, the teams uh, some time to get healthy as well. You mentioned it's yeah. for first place. The winner of this game will control its own destiny uh, to the SEC championship game. But, it, you know, the two weeks also game gave the teams some time to get in trouble. And Ryan Perillo did that. He's yeah. suspended for the game. Well, what role does that have in this one? Well, I think it's actually going to make Matt Flynn's uh, job a lot easier. He'll be the starting quarterback. And I think without having a guy that's change up coming in, as you may make the argument that it helps you in terms of forcing the defense to prepare for two different styles of guys. But when you look at the productivity of Paralu, when he did come in, he was not very productive. This is going to make the quarterback play of LSU much better. It's going to give them momentum that they have been lacking in recent weeks. I think the time off, incidentally, probably hurts Alabama more than it does LSU. LSU had some injuries that they need to recover from. And, and again, I think that figures into the overall equation as well. And, and one of those injuries is, is obviously early Doucette, who, who they're yeah. hoping is fully recovered. He, he did play in that game against Auburn, but now he's had a couple of weeks to get healthy. Let's talk about the game against Auburn. That was the last time we saw this LSU offense. Two seconds to go. They beat Auburn with the throw to the end zone that nobody expected. They racked up a ton <laughs> of yards against the Tigers in that game. Will, will we see the same thing here uh, against Alabama's defense that, frankly, hasn't been the type of Alabama defense that you would expect out of Nick Saban? Well, I tell you what, you bring, bring up an interesting point. Now, this Alabama team has turned a corner, in my opinion. They did something two weeks ago that they hadn't done in the previous six years, and that's win a game when they weren't leading in the fourth quarter. And then you look at that Tennessee game. I was breaking that one down last night. And this Tennessee ball club, weak defense, we know about that. But offensively, they can score some points. But this Alabama team shut them out the second half of that contest. So that's what we need to be honed in on. And I think LSU needs to be concerned about Nick Saban, a 4-3 weak guy screaming off the outside. That's what he does, NFL Deluxe. And he's going to be a challenge for this opposition to handle for sure. South Carolina's defense almost did that against Tennessee last week as well. Yep. What was a fantastic SEC game as well. But we digress a little bit here. Uh, on the other side for Alabama, you've got John Parker Wilson. He In that Tennessee game you mentioned, he had a fantastic football game, career highs in attempts and, and completions. But LSU has given up just 160 yards a game through the air, second in the SEC. So you have to turn the ball here to Terry Grant. Can he carry the load against LSU? I think Glenn can carry the load, and I think um, Hall is really the, the key there. Their wide receiver is an outstanding guy, but again, his fortunes are latched to the quarterback's success. You know, you, you got Parker Wilson who's come out and he's had up games, and then he's had down games where he's totally disappeared, has been inconsistent, really hadn't gotten the ball off on the right steps, gets back there in the pocket, and he's not the most mobile guy in the world. He can elude a little bit, but his play is really the key because those two players, really, his fortunes are connected to how well he handles the ball under center. If he comes up, have a great game and performs the way he has in recent weeks, I think they'll be just fine. Which one shows up? That's the question. Well, we'll also obviously see that and uh, John Parker Wilson will have a better game if Terry Grant can get some uh, yards on the ground. Spencer, very emotional game, huge in the SEC. Who's your winner? I'm going to go out on a limb here uh, just a little bit though and say Nick Saban earns that four plus million per annum salary with an upset victory. That's why they brought him there and I think he'll pull it off. That and to beat Auburn as well and that of course yeah. he'll get the chance in the Iron Bowl at the end of the season. Spencer we will see you Saturday break it all down. Thank you very much sir and uh, we'll see you this weekend. Alright sir we'll see you. LSU has won four straight in the series. They're trying to make it five beginning at five on CBS. That's 5 p.m. Eastern for more on this game or any other. Be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Spencer Tillman I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.